Uh, welcome, everyone. This is our first webinar of the holiday series as we uh, just are getting ramped up here and trying to get everyone ready for uh, what should be an exciting and uh, eventful holiday season, uh, hopefully a successful one at that. And in order to achieve success this holiday season, we have Maddie Alcala joining us today to help us explain uh, what to do to really plan for this holiday season. So Maddie, welcome. Thanks, Mark. Very happy to be here back for another holiday webinar. It's crazy how the time flies. Holiday kickoff. Here we go. Yes. Everyone's getting ready. Fired up. Um, well, uh, welcome everyone as well. If you have any questions, feel free to just drop them into the chat and we'll uh, try to either take them live or we'll address them in the chat as well as appropriate. So um, with that, we will get going. There we go. So uh, I'm Mark Kapsinski again. I run marketing here for Gudin. Maddie, you want to tell us a little bit about your role and uh, kind of how you work with our partners? So people that may not know you uh, could actually uh, learn about you a little bit. Yeah, thanks, Mark. So Maddie Alcala, nice to meet everyone virtually. I've been with Gutin now for about four and a half years, and I'm very fortunate to uh, oversee the growth organization here. So that's our sales team, account management, customer service, um, really anyone that you interact with um, that supports your business. So we love working with merchants, helping them grow. We have partners that are very, very big retail companies all the way down to people who are just starting out. So always excited to have anyone on these webinars answer some questions. And thanks for having me, Mark. It's good to be back. <laughs> you cover a wide swath of things here. At it, Gordon, so. <laughs> it's, it, it is wide. Yes, it is wide. And business strategy. That's in the title as well. I do quite a bit of work on our, our strategic initiatives. So a little bit of everything. But. Just to keep you busy a little bit. Yeah, just in my free time. <laughs> well, welcome. And again, uh, for folks that are tuning in, feel free to ask any questions for us in the chat and we'll uh, get to them as appropriate. All right. With that, uh, uh, hopefully a lot of you who are tuned in uh, already know who Gudin is, but we've been around for um, about seven years now or so, uh, since 2015. And, you know, we focus on what we call a smart supply chain uh, for brands and merchants and retailers to leverage all of our on-demand uh, or print-on-demand capabilities to basically transform the way you do business, mostly in the e-commerce world. And so we want to make sure that we're highlighting our different capabilities and so on and how, uh, as the topic is for today, um, how to get you ready for the holiday season. So uh, exciting stuff, always a, 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 a good kickoff to the season. So Maddie, I'm going to sort of turn it over to you here. Yeah. So as, as some of you may know, I love to always start with a bigger picture of what's happening in the space, get everybody excited, talk a little bit about trends. So um, and this year, you know, we're seeing a continuation of what really accelerated in 2020, which is a shift to dot-com shopping. So e-commerce is still very much the place to be. Um, and we're expected to see, according to Deloitte, between 11 to 50% growth of e-commerce holiday sales this holiday season compared to last year. So you know, a lot of our merchants had blockbuster seasons in 2020. Um, and so to imagine even more growth is exciting and possibly a little bit scary for some people. But uh, I think it's great, and, and we're certainly ready for it here at Guten, which we're going to talk a little bit about more later in the presentation. Um, but I think just an overall reminder that, you know, e-commerce is continuing to grow as part of that wallet share, even as the overall wallet share itself grows. Um, the other thing is an interesting trend, and I think this number is higher than it was last year. I, I can't remember, but pretty sure it is that almost 60% of customers um, are planning to start their holiday shopping now. It's October 13th. Um, I know I actually have already bought a couple of Christmas presents, um, but it's nice to know I'm not completely out of the norm there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about preparation as well. But I think that across the industry, you know, last year, a lot of retailers, the National Retail Federation, um, ran some pretty big marketing campaigns, Gutten included, to encourage people to shop early. Um, and that's definitely a theme that we're continuing to see this year, which is, I think, good for everyone on this call because the earlier customer shop, the, the higher likelihood of success in terms of getting those orders delivered by Christmas. So uh, Maddie, uh, 
you know, for us parents with young kids, uh, hopefully you'll have tips uh, throughout your presentation, not only on, you know, uh, you know, selling things for uh, obviously our partners and so on, but uh, for us parents, uh, maybe you have some tips and suggestions on hiding spots for gifts in the house so that itchy little fingers uh, can't find uh, things that were purchasing earlier and earlier. A, a new problem in the Kapsinski household. <laughs> Yes, I think that's actually slide seven in the deck, uh, ranked <laughs> ranked hiding spots for parents. Um, no, I, I'm sure we can touch on that, though. I don't know how much I can help you, Mark. You might have to, you might have to contact the third My party kids are there. good. My kids are good. <laughs> good stuff. So I, I think in, in keeping with the theme of trends, we're going to talk a lot about this during the presentation, but Holiday for Guten, you know, really starts in January of every year. And so we've started preparing for holiday 2021 as soon as it turned, the calendar turned. We all like to take a little bit of a break, of course, over um, the end of the year and the New Year holidays. But as soon as it becomes um, 2021, the new year, we start thinking about the next season. So that early preparation that's happened now quite a long time ago uh, includes a retrospective. So we always look back at the previous kind of peak buying period what went well and what didn't go so well. And so a lot of that's internal where we have conversations within our team, but we also do quite a bit of pulling our customers and having conversations and hearing from them where we can improve. And I think that's a big theme of just how Guten operates in general is really responding to that merchant feedback and manufacturing feedback as well and making sure that we're being a really good partner to the customer sets we serve. Um, forecasting is also a big piece of this. So this is something that we do throughout the year, not just peak season. We do it on a monthly basis for all of our manufacturing partners and with our merchants, um, our larger merchants in particular, it's a conversation that happens during our monthly business review process that our account management team runs. Um, but, you know, as I'm sure a lot of people have read in the press, and I know Andy, my partner in the supply chain org, is going to talk more about in an upcoming webinar is the, the, the supply chain and the disruptions we've seen have been really unprecedented in terms of how long it's taken to land goods um, at different facilities around the world. So forecasting is crucial for us to make sure that we have the people and the capacity and the materials that we need to support your brand um, and how much you're selling throughout the year. So those conversations also begin very early. A lot of our manufacturers actually begin ordering raw materials for holiday season in typically March or April is when those, those first POs go in. And so um, I think that's an important thing to understand on the merch side is you know, there's there's only so much we can do once we get into October and November. And of course, with Guten's redundancy model, we have a, you know, with backups, we have different uh, production locations we can route order volumes to, but um, there's been particular challenges this year by way of landing goods and making sure that we don't have any disruptions um, throughout the year and in peak season. Capacity planning and inventory go just along with that forecasting conversation. So how much, you know, how many orders do we think are going to come in? Do we have the raw materials to support those orders? And then do we have the production throughput that we need to ultimately get those items decorated and out the door? Um, so this year in particular, we've actually done quite a bit of work on expanding our network. We do it every year. Um, but a big focus for us was adding international footprint for wall art. That was a big priority in Q1. Um, and then also expanding some of our domestic footprint for apparel and some of our, our high volume sellers. So more redundancy, more backups, more facilities um, is definitely something that you'll see from us this holiday. And that was a, a key point of feedback from some merchants last year. Um, I won't bring up porcelain ornaments and a knock on wood if anyone remembers that, but we did have an unfortunate scenario where we had only one manufacturer that could do that product for us. And very happy to say that we're going into holiday season this year with multiple manufacturers that can produce that product for us. So the big benefit of Guten is not being single source if we take that very seriously. Of course, along with this as well has been an investment in service and technology. So we heard from several merchants um, and our big partners last year that they wanted the ability to update a shipping method before an item went into production, as an example. That's now functionality that exists in the Guten dashboard um, we've always heard from people, they want more transparency on when their order is going to be shipped. We now provide merchant stats on their homepage when they log into Guten. We have a public page that people can view our production times, and we even publish expected ship and delivery dates on a per order basis. So um, throughout the year, we've made an investment on the technology side to give merchants more transparency and control over their orders, um, and then an invest in service alongside that. So our customer service team has continued to grow, and you probably, um, many people on the call have already interacted with a new member of our account management team. 
So we're, we're putting people alongside the technology, which is our favorite thing to say, people power Guten. So you've got someone to call um, if someone does, something does go wrong, um, you've got that solution consultant on your side. What else, Mark, you've been at a lot of these conversations, but what have I missed? What else have we done that you think is exciting this year? I, I was just going to say, like, uh, you know, we, we had, uh, I think, a relatively successful year last year. Yeah. So a lot of this, in some ways, is just uh, incremental mm -hmm. updates, like little areas that we saw we needed improvement in. But it wasn't like, uh, you know, as I say, whole hog, you know, uh, fixes that we had to do for this year. So it feels like, you know, uh, Andy put in some good processes last year internally to you know, drive awareness and transparency internally and know how to extend that out to our partners and stuff. And I think um, certainly a lot of the uh, educational materials and the driving the awareness of like, to me, two things stood out from last year. You know, you really beat the drum on forecasting. And I think we tried to really amplify that to get people to submit to us their forecast so that then you could aggregate it and work with our manufacturers to be ready. I think that was a, a key component to it. And then the whole notion of moving the buying process up sooner to deal with uh, shipping issues that in so many ways are outside of even Gooden's control. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great segue too on our, our next slide. Let's let's look back at 2020 a little bit more. And say. <laughs> it was a good year, right? So what happened last year? What are we doing differently this year? What are we expecting versus last holiday season? So last year, I think we're, we're very proud that about 95, over 95% of our orders shipped on time. And so from a production throughput standpoint, we were really pleased with the performance um, that we saw in terms of getting items to customers' hands when we expected to expected to. Um, I think also our max customer service first response was maybe a little bit over 24 hours. And so um, I, I feel proud that we were there for our merchants and that they weren't having to wait multiple days to get answers back on questions. I think this number actually is going to be something that we improve even this year um, in terms of how quickly we're going to be able to respond. And a lot of that's going to come down to the efforts that we put in for merchants not even have to ask us a question, right? They can see their expected ship date on the Guten orders page rather than having to ask a person for it or make an edit to a shipping method without having to send in an email. Um, but we've also continued to invest in our customer service organization and the people and processes there. So I'm really proud of that team for, for how they've continued to service our partners. Um, I think this year we're gonna also see some shipping delays. So we're gonna talk about this more, but um, last year was really unprecedented from a volume standpoint, just in terms of the major carriers investing to keep up with the throughput we saw through the system. So we had FedEx deciding to skip package pickup days and we had clogged distribution centers during, you know, uh, by major countries and, or not countries, um, major counties and, you know, big footprint around the U.S. and even internationally. I think we're going to continue to see that, um, especially with some of the effect of this major shift from, you know, brick and mortar to dot com sales, as, as well as some lingering effects of, you know, the pandemic that really is still ongoing um, and not fully Unfortunately, something we can all put in our rear view mirror. Um, and within, you know, in terms of what we're, what we also saw last year, that I think unfortunately is going to continue with some stock shortages. So the entire global supply chain was disrupted in 2020 in a way that we had never seen. And so uh, we definitely felt effects of that in 2020 peak season. And I think we're going to continue to see effects of that in 2021. Um, but, you know, last year we had a lot more data, as Mark said. We, at Guten, we invested in a lot more people and processes and technology that made us a lot more transparent um, last holiday season. And so continuing to invest in that this year will be really important. But 2020, I think, was a big change for us, really, in how we operated. And a lot of that was a wake-up call after, you know, the Q2 2020 major order volume surge. And, um, you know, we had some issues with customer service and some issues with order shipping on time, though we did really, really well overall. But um, we invested heavily as a business to make 2020 holiday season go smoothly last year. And um, I think we're, as you said, we're, we're optimizing on that now. We're not having to totally recall how we do things. I think one of the things that stands out for me even is uh, many of us who joined the company, you know, last year um, had never gone through a, a good in holiday season. Yeah. And so we sort of, you know, all collectively did the best we could. And I, I think we had a very successful season. Mm -hmm. um you know given that but now we've all been through it once and so i yes. know as we've been doing more of our planning this year 
it's, you know, we can, you know, be more part of the conversation of what we all saw, what fixes we think we should make, different areas we can improve on, different ways we can communicate better, um, you know, continue that notion of transparency that you spoke of. Um, so I think this truly was a let's improve upon last year versus let's just figure it out and hope it works. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you'll see that on the next slide as well. When we look at what we've gotten done in 2021, it's a lot of optimizations on things that were already working or, or, or not you know, massive overhauls, but just um, positive expansions to what we can deliver. And so I already spoke about international expansion. Um, it was a big priority for Walmart. So obviously, those goods are very large and expensive to ship, but you're going to be hearing some more from us in the next couple of weeks about apparel as well um, in terms of what we can do there, particularly with the UK and Europe. Um, and then I also spoke about some of the changes we made to the platform in terms of giving merchants more visibility into when they expect their orders to ship, um, the ability to add pack slips and return addresses to their orders, which was a big request after last season, um, adding new products to the catalog, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, um, expanding our team, and then even for personalization, this is an exciting one. You know, last year, and I think what we're continuing to see when we talk about macro trends is that personalization of product is a, a big way to drive conversion and, and brand loyalty. And so we've seen a lot of merchants adopt um, personalization as a key strategy for their e-commerce sales. And some personalize all products, some only offer a couple personalized products on their website. But regardless, we've invested a good amount of time this year into making it easier for those merchants to get items into production faster and to update those image files. And so um, this is actually exciting too because we kind of co-developed, well, we did all the, we did the technology work, but we we co-thought about the best way to solve this problem with some of our merchant partners. And so they were really involved in the planning and scoping processes and meeting with our technology teams and previewing, you know, betas and understanding, giving us feedback. And that's something we love to do here. So we're proud of the, the workflow improvements that we released because we know that um, at least for a lot of the partners we worked with, it was something that they really valued. And, should help them even cut down that order processing time even more this holiday season. I think um, sometimes uh, our partners don't always see or feel that we're truly listening to them and yeah. and uh, making some of the uh, updates or improvements that they wish we did. Uh, so I think it's you know important for them to see you know things like you have here that we actually do listen to our partners and maybe we don't always do the best job of communicating that we're listening listening but you know all this type of stuff is outcomes of our partners telling yeah. us that you know what they need and us trying to aggregate all that data up and and figure out how to best take action on it. Totally, that's that's the sh it's behind everything we do is what will make our partners more successful for sure. And speaking of success, so I've talked a lot about what Guten has done. <laughs> now, if anyone's on the line, you're not going to get away with any homework from me on what you can do to be more successful as well. So I know I, I do have to call out <laughs> last year, you've everyone after our kickoff webinar basically was like all into forecasting and yep. going out and uh, asking us how to do forecasting. And so, uh, so uh, I don't know what happened to the slides there, but uh, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was you, you gave everyone homework. <laughs> I gave everybody homework. Make your forecast, right? And I, a lot of people listened because it was so totally. much easier to get that data from a lot of our merchants this year. And I was like, all right, this is good. Thanks, guys. You're listening. <laughs> um, and I think we made it easier as well. We just improved data and process around that. But yeah, that's the first one is develop that seasonal sales plan. And that's forecasting. That's working with your manufacturing partners and fulfillment partners, um, understanding when you're going to run campaigns. Um, and just making a plan for resourcing, right? So this is a huge opportunity for people who are new to e-commerce or even have been through a couple of holiday seasons before. If you've got consumer eyeballs, people ready to spend. Um, so get those plans done and worked on ahead of time. And Guten's here to support you as well. And so if you know this is something that you want help with or you want a, a sounding board to talk with someone about, that's why we have the team of solutions consultants that are there to work with our merchants and help them really be set up for success which is of course number two. So um, there are so many resources out there. Guten, of course, we try to provide these to you, but there's there's so many different resources for merchants to understand how to be successful during a holiday season. So take advantage of those, right? Um, don't repeat other people's mistakes, you know, learn from what's working and what's not working. Obviously there is a an element to trying to be creative and do your own thing, but balancing that with not wanting to reinvent the wheel and taking advice and support where you can get it, I think is really important. Um, 
obviously you're the one that it's, it's your brand, it's your business. And so if there's people willing to help, I think why not take advantage of that? Um, the third one is, you know, we've talked about this at length, but as much as possible, try to encourage your customers to place orders early. Um, I actually got an email the other day from Pottery Barn um, and they were saying, you know, you checked out this item, you should order now to get this before Christmas. And I was like, oh no, like, okay. And I went on their website and I could still, like, I could still get it if I ordered it now by like early November. But I think the messaging that we're seeing from those major retailers is like, start your shopping, start your shopping. And it's working. You saw that in the survey at the start of their webinar is people are planning to shop earlier. And so anything you can do on your social and even running promotions ahead of time that aren't just concentrated on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, uh, I think that's all great. We can all invent our own e-commerce holidays or run specific sales if we need to. Um, and with that, communicate lead time, right? So on that Pottery Barn example, I logged in and I had, they told me it was going to take three to four weeks to get my order. And so I knew that going in um, and that, that was okay with me. I actually didn't end up buying the product, but I'll probably go back this weekend. Uh, but the same thing, right? You want to set those expectations for production and delivery. And we're living in an on-demand world. And so that's where Putin comes in trying to give you as much information as we have to say, look, most of our products for this, you know, most of our crib sheets are taking seven days to get produced. And so we really recommend that you set that expectation with merchants that it's going to take seven days before they're going to receive a tracking link or even more, um, because especially as we go into peak buying periods. And the worst thing is to, you know, over promise and under deliver. And so people are always excited when their package shows up early. They're not happy when their package shows up late. And so you don't want to tank your conversion rate, of course, and say it's going to get there in 30 days. But I think setting those realistic expectations is really important, um, especially as we go into, you know, talking about order submission timeframes and all of that. And it, it it makes me cringe when I see merchants who have a guaranteed delivery by Christmas. And I'm like, what do you know about UPS and FedEx that I don't know? Because UPS and FedEx and USPS aren't guaranteeing delivery. So you've got a really good deal going if you've got somebody who can guarantee your packages are going to get shipped on time. So, um, you know, I think that comes in with the education and, and you know, work with some people who are, are experts in the space to understand really the landscape and that even with major retailers, um, carriers in particular are saying, look, there, are, there aren't guarantees and there will be delays. And, um, you know, if, if I'm if I'm a big box retailer and I can't get guarantees, it's unlikely, unfortunately, that anybody else can. So I think realistic expectations is good. And, and knowing that Guten really is here to support you um, in terms of giving you all the information we have. Last thing is supply chain has been disrupted, particularly with popular items in apparel and other you know pot, pot sellers. The more you can be flexible with product substitutions is really what helps you and keep your orders going. So um, we have a substitution list that we're going to be publishing this week to give merchants some updated guidance on where we'll be subbing in orders and do quite a bit of work on this internally to make sure that we're making the best decision on your behalf so that really the customer doesn't notice an underlying difference in the product received. But um, our view, and I know it's the view of most of our merchants as well, is that it's always better to get something out um, if it's really, really close, then to have to cancel an order or not be able to ship something on time. So um, the more you can set expectations again, that particularly with some of those top selling items, apparel in particular, that substitutions are likely and that, you know, Gildan may be out of stock of this color in all of the sizes for eight weeks, but we're going to sub in something that's really, really, really close to a Gildan um, and that should be okay, right? Because ultimately, like, if you get the, if you get a great looking sweatshirt and it looks really nice and the print's good, um, as long as it fits and it's the right color, it shouldn't really matter what's on the tag. So I think the product substitution piece is something that I know Andy's going to talk a lot more in our supply chain overview, but we are definitely expecting to have to make substitutes this year. Um, and so just going to let merchants know about that early and try to be as transparent as we can, and we'll do what we can to make the right decisions on your behalf. Great. Wow, a lot of stuff there um, yes. to unpack. Maybe a couple just follow-ups. Um, I think definitely just more as a, a note is as soon as Gooden's getting information, whether it's from Andy and the supply chain team or the other Andy on the shipping team, um, we're trying to pass that along right away to our partners so that they have the best information that we have as quickly as possible so that then they can further message it out, right? That's right. Yeah, and you know, there's we do this through all sorts of different channels, right? We have our social channels, we have email, um, we have announcements we can make on our website and on particular pages. We have our account management team, our customer service team. We have a holiday landing page. 
Um, and so we try to put this information everywhere that we can to get it in front of merchants. And a lot of times, multiple different locations, but um, I definitely recommend that people bookmark our landing page, book up, bookmark our production and um, shipping time delivery page. Um, and then also, you know, check your email. I know that you, we all get a lot of emails, um, but it, it does, it, it hurts. We send an email about something, the merchant's like, I didn't read it. And I'm like, I know, but there was so much good information in there. And so it could definitely be hard to stay on top of all of that, which is why we try to put it in different channels to, to get it in front of people. But, um, you know, was, as soon as we get updates and information, we communicate it out and we typically communicate it more than once. And we are, we are repeating ourselves on purpose. And so if our social media pages and our emails look very similar. It's for a reason to make sure people don't miss crucial information. Great point. Um, question for you also around like lead times and and sort of the process, uh, what we're seeing people, um, I guess, achieving when they're selling earlier and so on. Do you think that's going to uh, have a an additional benefit of uh, more sales for our merchants, you know, because they're move, they're shifting the sales earlier, you know, the lead times are, are getting set earlier, right? And thus, you know, maybe even, you know, having longer windows to sell versus just trying to get all orders in on one day. Uh, do you think they're going to feel, you know, like they're selling more volume this year because of that? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, it, it does depend on the marketing strategy of the merchant and kind of how customer acquisition looks like in the past, um, of course, consumer behavior. But really, I think you're on the nose with that, Mark, is that the more merchants can sell earlier and run promotions earlier, um, you know, the wider potential customer group that you're attracting, you've got more time to get eyeballs and your products in your site. Um, and then ultimately, too, the production and shipping speeds for those sales is going to look better. And so, the more we can all do to even even the curve out um, in terms of the the constraint or you know the, the pressure that we put on the supply chain to perform in a very narrow window, um, the quicker that our manufacturing and shipping partners are going to be able to produce toward the end of that season. And so we always have that discussion when we're setting the order submission guidance, which went out a couple of weeks ago. But um, you know, really, it's if merchants are waiting till the last day and we've all got this massive influx of orders front, like running through the system, you know. It, it, we might have the capacity to take on those orders, but it's still going to be slower, right? When you think about labor and equipment time and all of that. And so if we can flatten that curve a little bit and get orders where they're trickling in um, earlier in the season and a little bit more consistently, that helps our manufacturers from a staffing and throughput and shipping partners as well. Just keep continue with that steady volume and, and it, it yields, you know, higher, higher, I think, satisfaction for everyone. Um, and so I, I've always, for people who are new and first timers as well, I remember we had an instance a couple of years ago where um, a merchant said, well, I got I got my orders in by the last day. And it said, yeah, but you, you submitted zero orders and then you submitted like 5,000 of them, right? And we're going to chip away at that 5,000, right? But like, can you try to spread the volumes out a little bit? And so, right, like there's, there's real human capital and a, you know, machine time that we have to think about here, right? It's not just an instant switch that we can flip. And so, um, as much as possible, pulling those sales up and making sure too that people who are processing personalized orders or using CSV uploads, like trickling those volumes in, not waiting for big bangs is always the way to go um, to ensure some better outcomes there. That's great. Um, how about one more question on this topic too, Maddie, which is like some of our merchants may be using other providers for other products and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we don't uh, wish them, you know, you know, trouble and so on, but if they should run into trouble with one of our competitors and, you know, another platform that they might be using, do you have any advice for those folks that might be like, hey, we just started entering holiday season, we're struggling with product X with another provider, Gudin, can you help? Like, what's your answer to that? So my answer is, please ask us the question and we will be as honest with you as we can. And the answer in a lot of those instances will probably be yes. And in some, it might be no, because, you know, really as a team, what we don't want to do is take a bad situation, make it worse, or tell you that we can deliver if we can. Um, and so there is a realistic consideration on stock levels and capacity. And um, there are a handful of products in our catalog, right, that, you know, merchants have provided us forecasts that have worked with us. and They gave us those forecasts in June. We want to be fair to them, to the fact that they've done the planning and make sure that they can get their orders out on time. So we won't take on new business for some of those products if we know that it's not going to work um, and we don't have the capacity levels. What I do feel confident in saying, though, is that right now we're looking really good. 
um, and that we've done a lot of good work on redundancy and capacity and inventory planning. And so for the most part, um, if someone came to us and asked for help, I think we'd be able to give it. Um, but the more details, the better, and the more that you can help us understand your sales planning, your volume expectations, what your expectations are. We try to be very transparent um, just as a team and a company overall. And um, I, I, like I always say to our account managers and solution experts, like it is always better to say no to someone if we really can't do it than to say yes and fail them later. So we will, we will say no to you if we can't help, but I do think for the most part, we'll be able to help. And so if that is the case, um, shoot us an email, get in contact, submit a form on our website. There's a bunch of different reasons, ways we can get in, get in contact with you. And someone will likely be in touch within a very short amount of time and say, look, talk about this, tell us more, how can we help? Terrific, thanks for that. All right, uh, I think you have uh, one more slide here uh, with, we have some new products this uh, season that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and this is just a, this is a small collection of them. I was trying to count the other day, and I think all told across new apparel models and new products, we've added like 25 to 30 new products this year, which is pretty exciting. That's great. Um, so there's some of the recent ones on this slide. The Apple Watch bands, I love. I think they're really cool. Um, pet leashes, we've already got a lot of interest in. It's just a new product. I haven't seen it really in the market. Um, and then these premium water bottles that actually come with a straw. I've been told by, um, I don't have kids myself, but I've been told by parents that these are very popular <laughs> gifting item, Mark, and they're small, so easy to hide. Um, but I think these, these work well, I think with backpacks in school and just the knocking over that happens um, with small hands. So these have been very popular. And then of course- I, go, I gotta get my own personal order in here because like uh, yes. I'm a huge Christmas fan. So, yes. uh, you know, like I, I think all these things are speaking to me right now. Totally. I mean, I every every family member every year for me gets something that's produced. Uh, they all love it because we have such a great catalog in the college. Yeah, I love the Christmas stockings. So yeah, I get my, the Christmas stockings. I gotta get my orders in. I gotta get my daughter working on some imagery. Yes, she's a good designer. You gotta get her on this. She's a really good designer. But yeah, well, she, the she knows her dad order. is not a good designer. <laughs> You have a good eye for design, Mark, but you know when to outsource. <laughs> you know when to outsource. Um, but yes, of course, the, the regular seasonal products are always a huge hit. Calendars that aren't on here, we do right. a lot of calendars, of course, this time of year. Um, but, I, you know, for people who haven't worked with us in a while, our product catalog at guten.com got a huge facelift earlier this year. Kudos to Mark and the marketing team for that. So there's some really beautiful images um, that you can find of the catalog and products. And of course, once you start working with our team, we'll help you order some samples and, and take a look at some of these items. But order those samples now. It's already October 13th, which is crazy. And so if you're thinking crazy. about adding new products, right, you've got to get your designs done. You've got to get samples. You might want to do some of your own photography and promotion and marketing planning. So now is the time to um, wrap up those last editions of new listings and think about what your customers might like to see this season. Terrific. I'm making my Christmas list as we go here. <laughs> Productive. We'll love that. All right. Well, um, with that, um, you know, we just want to say thank you, Maddie, for joining us and yeah. getting the holiday Maddie. season kicked off. And I know this season we literally go week to week on webinars. <laughs> so every Wednesday we'll be doing a webinar uh, roughly at this time uh, every week. I think we adjust for one hour difference on a few of them, but uh, we have a whole series planned uh, with your help and guidance on topics that we should cover. And uh, all that can be found on our holiday landing page that if folks are uh, uh, tuning in, it's right off of gooden.com, click resources, click holiday, and you'll find everything you need to know there uh, from delivery times to webinar schedule to other content and resources that uh, is basically there to help you be successful with your holiday season. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me go first and steal the thunder of all of the other upcoming <laughs> presenters. My favorite thing. Um, Everyone now gets to refer back to you. Uh, that's right. right? Your presentation, so. I know that was deliberate. It was very fun. Well, it's always awesome. one of my favorite webinars to give every year. So I'm excited for another well, great holiday season. Thanks, Maddie, for joining us. And for everyone out there, have a great holiday season and uh, keep us posted on how we can best help you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.